Hello and thanks for visiting our website. Today we're going to learn how to put bearings and brushes in the 1G, the first generation of Ford alternator, and the 2G, the second generation Ford alternator, the one that has the built-in regulator. We're going to do these both kind of uh, shoved together into one video because the bearings are very, very similar. The only difference in a bearing and brush job for both of these is just the way the brushes are mounted. Taking the pulley off is just like the rest of them. We're going to use a half inch impact with a 15 16 socket. Hold on to the pulley with a glove or a rag. Take the nut off and the lock washer pulleys usually come right off. Underneath the fan is a thin spacer. There you see the head of the 516 bolt that's holding it together. There are three of them that need to be removed. Hold on to the back half with one hand and tap the front half off. Down inside you'll see the two brushes and the two springs. The two springs come right out. The brushes will have to stay in until you take those two quarter inch head screws out to remove the brush holder. Then you'll notice of the three terminals there to, are together, the one that's closest to the battery terminal is the field terminal. There's a nut on that post. You have to take that nut off. It's usually a 5 16 socket. So here's all the parts disassembled from the brush holder assembly on the 1G Ford external voltage regulator. Here you see the two springs, the brush holder, the outside insulator, the internal insulator, the post that one of the rings on the brush goes to, the two screws that hold it down, and the two brushes. So reinstalling the new brushes, start working with the brush holder with the square fitting up. We're going to put a spring in there. Load the brush in. And then here we have a straightened out paper clip. And just let it set right like that. Now you can see where we loaded both brushes. We put the spring down in the hole and forced it down in and used the straightened out paper clip as a retainer. The next thing we have to do is put the post up through the loop of the brush, run the string of the brush up through the groove, and then put the internal insulator down into place. Here we have a one inch socket that we're going to use as a brace around the outside diameter of the needle bearing. Set it down like that. Then this is a half inch socket, but just about, it doesn't really matter which size, we're going to use the drive end to set on top of the needle bearing and drive the needle bearing out. The slip ring and assembly we've just placed in an oven at 350 and we're going to leave it in there for about 20 minutes. What we're going to do in the meantime is remove the shaft and the bearing from the front plate. Place the assembly in a vise so that the rotor is loose. Take the pulley nut and screw it back onto the rotor shaft halfway. Spray the bearing and shaft area with your favorite brand of penetrating oil and wait five minutes. If there appears to be any Loctite or if you meet with any resistance from the next step, you can take a propane torch and heat up the area before you go to pound it out.
rest a 2x4 on top of the shaft and the nut and pound it out with a hammer. The three screws down inside have to be removed. And normally they are 5 16 heads. After the inside bearing cover and three bolts have been removed, turn the plate upside down and set a three quarter socket on the bearing in order to drive it out. Place the plate in an oven for 20 minutes and bake at 350 before reinstalling the new bearing. After the plate's been heated up, the bearing pretty much falls in. Then you put the cover and the three bolts back on. The rear plate assembly has been in the oven for approximately 20 minutes. We're going to install the needle bearing. First, put a couple drops of oil on the needle bearing. Set the needle bearing down in and tap it in straight. Leave a small amount sticking out the rear. It's not exactly flush. It's about a 32nd to a 16th of an inch. Just a quick trick putting the brush holder back in. Take a little bit of dielectric grease or white lithium grease and put a dab. so that the inside insulator stays in place while you put it back in. I'm going to be putting it back in just like that. and then put the two screws in that holds the brush holder in place. Looking at it from this angle after it's been installed you'll notice that the brush wire goes off to the left and grounds on the screw. Okay as we mentioned before we bake the front plate in the oven for 20 minutes at 350 drop the new bearing in then we put the bearing cover back on and the three bolts in. Take this opportunity to polish up the copper slip rings. Wipe off where the needle bearing goes so that there's no dirt or any type of pollutants in that area. And also polish the shaft. And take special note that the spacer that belongs right there is in fact there. Then you can put a couple drops of oil on there if you want to. So if the bearing goes right on, then put the spacer, fan, pulley, lock washer, and nut. And uh, you tighten that pulley up the exact opposite of the way you took it off. Wrap a rag around here or put a glove on and use a half inch impact with a 15 16 socket. Then we're ready to set the rear plate over the rotor. Put the three bolts in. Tighten them down and then pull the brush pin. Also we're ready to reinstall the field insulator and the nut and tighten that down and you're done. Now the 2G, the second generation, the one with the built-in voltage regulator the bearing and needle bearing are removed and installed exactly the same. 
The only difference is the brushes are a little different. As a matter of fact, they're probably easier than the 1G. You'll see the Torx heads. These are T20 usually. Take these four out first. Leave these two in for now. Sometimes this has a cover on it. You just go ahead and either remove that or break it off for now. These two hold the brushes and the brush holder on. Whereas these four, take those out first and you can remove the whole brush holder assembly as a unit. So we're taking the brush holder off. And you can see that these brushes are completely gone. Here we have the two springs. And the first thing we want to do is take these two Torx heads out. Those are the opposite end of these two screws and the nuts right there. So when you take those out, the brushes come straight out. Okay, here we have all the pieces, parts for the brush holder assembly except for the voltage regulator. The two springs, the two screws, the two nuts, the two brushes, and the one brush holder. Stretch the springs out a little bit. Load the brush down in so that the string lead is towards the opening. Then we have our straightened out paper clip. Push it in just like that and do the other one exactly the same so that it looks like that. Then we lay a nut on top of the brush lead on both sides. Hold them with your fingers like that. And making sure that the open side of the brushes faces the open side of the voltage regulator. Set it onto the regulator. And tighten up the two screws. Then we set the voltage regulator back in its place. Put the four screws in. Tighten them down. And then pull the pin.